I want my hoop to be about 55 inches in diameter. So what I did was I took this piece of plywood and used the radius of 27 and a half inches and put a screw right in the middle and then tied a piece of twine 27 and a half inches long and then used a pencil to trace out a round arc. And then what I'm going to do is cut that out, screw it onto the remaining piece of plywood and use that as a jig to bend my hoop. So this is my jig for bending my hoop. I stole the idea from some gardeners that I found on YouTube that were bending perfectly curved hoops uh, for making like tunnel uh, protectors over the tops of their plants. And those guys were using like scrap lumber, old pallets and stuff like that and blocks of wood. But I figured it'd be a lot easier and a lot smoother just to get a single sheet of three quarter inch plywood and cut out half a circle and then screw it down on the rest of the plywood and bend my EMT around that because I don't have a tubing roller and I don't want to sit there and try to bend it an inch at a time and then hope that it comes out right. And it looks like my jig worked great. To make a hoop 55 inches in diameter, it takes a little over 14 foot of conduit and they come in 10 foot sections so it took two pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them down and um, weld it at the very top and then also down at the bottom of the base of the paramotor. But the bends came out nice and smooth and it only took me about 10 minutes. EMT conduit is treated steel so that it doesn't rust. Do not ever weld on EMT conduit without removing the coating that's on the steel. It releases toxic fumes and it might kill you or give you brain damage. Now I'm going to attempt to bend the main part of my frame and the legs using one piece. Um, I don't have much experience bending conduit, so I don't know how this is going to turn. Well, it took a little bit of adjusting back and forth, but I'm pretty happy with the result. Um, I didn't get it 15 inches across, I got it 14 inches across, but I think that's still going to be enough to comfortably get the swing arms underneath my back, uh, or excuse me, underneath my arms. Um, my previous paramotor was very narrow, and I had to have spacers in there in order to get the arms to where they weren't clamping down across my rib cage. Uh, next, I'm going to put a little cross member across here and then across the back where the hoop um, will meet up and then I'm going to put an angled support coming down here and that's also going to give me a little space to work right there because I'm going to uh, fabricate a mount for the uh, swan arms on each side. So to make a good connection on these cross members, 
I'm going to have to notch the ends of the tube uh, since the tubing is round so that it will fit nice and tight up against the rest of the uh, piece uh, without any big gaps. A good rule of thumb whenever you're notching tube is to go about a third of the diameter of what you're connecting to. So the true diameter of this half inch EMT is 0.71 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to notch um, about a quarter of an inch on each end. So I need to cut it half an inch longer than I actually need it and then notch it out a quarter on each end and then it should fit exactly between the space. So here are the cross members notched out. I just used a flap disc on an angle grinder and for right now I'm just going to put the, the one on the bottom and then the one at the back. I'm not going to put anything up here where the frame mount goes uh, quite yet because I don't have a motor yet and I don't want to have to redo my work if things aren't spaced out correctly. So I'm going to weld these in. Uh, first I got to clean off that uh, coating that way I don't have any bad fumes while I'm welding. on because once I cut it it wanted to spring out of shape so I had to put it on there on the jig and, and kind of stretch it around and then attack it and then do the weld. Um, I'm trying to decide how I'm going to do the spars. I don't know if I'm going to do like two coming off the top going right up to the middle uh, and then mounting my pluma where the spars radiate out from the frame and then you have like a little uh, curved cross member in between the two in the middle and your pulley goes to that um, so I'm going to mess around with it and see so I think this is a good stopping point I've got the uh, two top spars in place um, a lot of eyeballing and guesstimating to get the angles right. Um, maybe I should have just run the length of it all the way from the bottom all the way up to the top and then put a flat piece in between. Um, but I like the idea of having the frame that my harness is hooked onto one continuous piece from the top to the bottom. So that's the reason I did it that way. But uh, not looking too bad. Uh, I'll get on the scale and weigh it and see how much it's coming in at right now. It doesn't feel that heavy. 